Buenos dias. Well, I don't get no good morning. morning. <laughs> Buenos dias. Buenos, Buenos dias. dias. Como esta? Bien. Mis, me said bien cocinera. Close enough. Me siento bien. Me siento. Okay. All right. Good morning. This is Cooking and Learning with Care segment. Sorry. Not right. Cooking and Learning with Care segment with Chef Destiny and Chef Aja. And it is a beautiful Wednesday morning, hump back, hump back Wednesday. That's right. Yeah. How y'all doing this morning? Oh, doing good. Great, great, great. great. Um, we got some lovely things for y'all today, so let's go ahead and get started. Aja, are you ready? Yes, Chef, I am. All right. All right. Good morning again, everybody. Today. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'm going to be making two simple recipes. Um, Wednesdays we usually we usually do like fun things for the kids. So I'm going to tap into that this morning. Um, the first recipe I'm going to be making is a simple funnel cake recipe. This is actually my first time ever making it, but I'm, I'm I love funnel cake and. I'm just happy to be making it. This is a bag, a Ziploc bag, and in it I have my funnel cake batter. Um, the batter consists of one fourth cup of milk, one egg, one tablespoon of water, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of sugar, pinch of salt, and a half a cup of all-purpose flour. Now I put it in a bag because funnel cake, for those who may not be familiar with it, it is a light, I mean, a dough that is fried, excuse me, a batter that is fried in oil. You find it at carnivals, festivals, and it's a circular motion. So we're going to use the bag to control that circular motion. You can use mm -hmm. a pipe bag or you can use a Ziploc bag. Um, I have my oil getting hot. So I'm just gonna cut off the tip of my funnel cake. And I'm just going to make a circular motion. And I'm going to fry it until it gets hot. I mean, excuse me, until one side turns brown. And then of course, I'm gonna flip it over to the other side. Since it cooks fast, you want to make sure that you have all of your ingredients next, I mean, all of your utensils next to you. You want something to drain the funnel cake on and a tong, preferably to flip it. And that's a little burnt. It was a little bit too hot, but this I'm going to show to you once it's done. Cooks very quickly. Now, funnel cake originated in Germany, and I don't know how to, I forget the pronunciation of the G German word but it literally means to funnel through something, okay? So that's why it's a funnel cake. And here you have your funnel cake, okay? okay. You let it drain. Now it's traditionally topped with um, powdered sugar, okay? But you can top it with any toppings you want. You can use fresh fruit. Maybe you want to slice up some bananas and some store-bought caramel sauce to put on top. That's a good, a good thing to do. I put some frozen blueberries into a pan with a little drizzle of honey, some lemon extract because blueberries and lemon go well together. I let it cook down and that's gonna be one of my toppings. I'm also gonna to mix together some cinnamon sugar. So it's gonna be kind of like a churros. For you, those that may not be familiar, churros is a Spanish dessert where they fry dough and they toss it in cinnamon sugar. So you mm -hmm. take your funnel cake, it has rested. Take your blueberries and put that on one side. You heard me. Something fun to do. I don't know, movie night with your grandkids, movie night with yourself. And on the other side, I'm gonna sprinkle that good cinnamon sugar. And here you have funnel cake made two ways. And it's really delicious, okay? Are there any questions about this recipe before I get to the second recipe? You need to uh, share your recipe with the uh, festivals because they uh, 
funnel cake be thin. I like yours. Oh, thank you. Yes, I like it when it's like nice and fluffy. You know, a little bit more height to it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to the side. The second recipe. What makes the height? Well, I did let the batter rest. Um, that might have had something to do with it, but if I'm, I'm really not sure. I'm not really a baker, okay. um, but I'm really not sure. It might have been when I let the batter rest for about ten minutes. That sounds like it. Okay. Okay. Now for the next recipe, I'm going to be making jalapeno poppers. Um, you Good. can do this with a, those little sweet mini peppers if you don't want to do a jalapeno. You can do this with mushrooms, okay? Something, a vegetable that you can stuff. Now, as I've said before, if you are scared of the spice of a jalapeno, all you need to do is take out the seeds. It will not be spicy at this point. It's gonna have a little bite to it, but it's not gonna have the heat. The heat is carried through the seeds. So you wanna find you some big jalapenos. You want to cut them in half, scrape out the seeds. You can use any cheese that you want. I'm using a mild cheddar shredded cheese. I'm keeping it simple. And you just fill the cavity of the jalapeno. I'm using a pork bacon, but if you're not using pork, I'm pretty sure you can use turkey bacon. But if you're familiar with turkey bacon, I probably will drizzle a little oil on top of the turkey bacon just yeah. so it doesn't dry out. But this is a pork bacon, any type of bacon you want. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. You're just going to wrap it until it completely covers the cheese and the jalapeno. Mm. All right. You would then put it on a baking sheet. And I just use a bamboo skewer that I cut in half. You can use a toothpick. And I just put it like this on my baking sheet. Very easy. You're gonna put it into a preheated oven at 350 and you're gonna let it cook between 15 to 18 minutes. Let me show you how it looks when it's done. Take the stick out. And these are really good to snack on. And like I said, you can use mushrooms, you can use the little bell peppers, little sweet peppers. And here you have jalapeno um, stuffed peppers with cheese wrapped in bacon. If I squeeze it a little bit, you can see that cheese oozing in the middle and it's really good. It's just a um, just fun way to eat. Um, are there any questions about either the jalapeno cheese stuffed peppers or the funnel cake? No, it looks good. All righty. Well, there's no more questions. I got, no more question. Question. I got yes, one more question. Um, if I wanted to bread, can I still bread that or should I just do it like that? If I wanted to do the breaded kind, like turkey salve, I just wrap it in, I just put. Um, Bell, I just put the bread in on it and leave off the bacon. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. If I want to do the breaded kind, like uh, bell, like a uh, turkey's has, I just leave off the bacon and just put the bread in on it and fry it. Yes, ma'am. You okay. could just. If you would need to do the dip it in flour, then an egg wash, then some more breading so that the it holds, and okay. then fry it. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Any other questions? All right, Shawanda and Brent, hot tips and hacks. We're Thank you, to... Aja. You're welcome. Looks good. Thank you, Aja. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, Shawanda. Wait a minute now. Wait, wait. <laughs> uh, good morning, Shawanda. Good morning. We can't see your face at all. Lord have mercy. My children. Okay, there we go. All right. All right. Hello. Good morning. Hope everybody's staying nice and dry today. This this morning, these are my tips and hacks. One, did you know that you can add sour cream for extra smooth scrambled eggs? Two, use a damp towel to keep your cutting board in place. Three, 
to get burns out of your pots. Did you know that you can use baking soda and cocoa, let it sit for like 30 minutes? And four, use a whiteboard to keep track of what's in your fridge and freezer. Five, keep commonly used ingredients within easy reach and get rid of old ones you don't use. All right, thank you, Shawan. Anybody got any questions or need to hear those? Yeah. Again? What was the uh, whiteboard? Oh, use a um, whiteboard to um, keep track of what's in your fridge and freezer. Oh, okay. To get the burns out of the pot, you said use um, baking uh, soda and baking cocoa. soda and Coca Cola. Does it sit for how long? Uh, about thirty minutes. Okay. Awesome. All right, here we go, Brent. Good morning, everyone. How are you all? Happy Wednesday to you all. Happy Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs> we have, I have three cooking tips and I have one cooking hat, okay? Uh, okay. The first, the first cooking tip is if you bake, make sure you buy a scale. The scale will help you portion whatever you're baking. Uh, the second tip is to make sure you work in an area that's well lit, meaning make mm. sure the lightning, whatever area you're cooking in, make sure the light is proportional. They can play a big part in cooking as well, okay? Awesome. Uh, okay. The third tip is buy an instant re-digital meat thermometer, and that can, that can be used when you're cooking steak instead of having to cook into the steak. You could just use the thermometer to see the temperature of the steak, okay? Oh, okay. And the uh, cooking hat is make sure your cabinets are neat and efficient. Cause that, that can also play a part in cooking as well. Make sure your seasons are, are where your season's supposed to be so you won't have to be scrambling everywhere when you cook, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And they're wiped off. They're yes, clean. Sure they're they're wiped. Wiped. <laughs> yes. Amen. <laughs> thank Ooh. you. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. You're welcome. Good job, y'all. All job. right. So today I will be going over. We're going to be doing a no-bake chocolate cheesecake with the brownie crust. Uh -oh. So mm. a little cheesecake history. It is a sweet dessert consistent of one or more layers. The main and thickest layer consists of a mixture of soft cream cheese, ricotta, or cottage, um, eggs, and sugar. The bottom layer consists of a crust or base made of crushed cookies, graham crackers, pastries, and sometimes sponge cake. It may be baked or unbaked, um, sweetened with sugar. It may be flavored different ways. Typically, is topped with fruit, whipped cream, nuts, cookies, fruit sauce, chocolate syrup, or other toppings. The earliest mention of cheesecake is by the Greek physician, I'm gonna say it the best way I can say it, Agamus, A-E-G-I-M-U-S, fifth century BC, who wrote a book on the art of making cheesecake, the earliest cheesecake recipes, were found in a book called Cato, the Elders de Agri Tatura, which includes three recipes for three cakes for religious uses. The mm. first one is named Libum, L-I-B-U-M. The second one is named Savilum, S-A-V-I-L-L-U-M. The third one is named Placenta. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Placenta is the most modern cheesecake having a crust that is separately prepared and baked, kind of like what we're doing today because you're going to bake your brownie crust first and then we'll do the filling. So I just want to show you all a couple pictures of what, what the cheesecakes I just named look like from back in the day. and some from around the world. So we got a South Africa cheesecake. Y'all, everybody can see that? Yes. 
Okay. You got an Asian, Indian, Philippine, Japan, mm -hmm. Bulgaria, German, France, Italy, the Netherlands, a Polish cheesecake, Russian, Sweden, United Kingdom, Ireland, Ukraine, North America. Wow. And everybody know that famous New York style cheesecake. And if you're accustomed to going to um, the cafe or um, where would we be going, Auntie, with them big cakes? Um, Metro Cafe. Yeah, the cafe style cake. Huge. Um, you know what I'm talking about, because those cakes be like this tall. Right. <laughs> and I have a closer shot. Okay, so right here is a real placenta cake. Where? This one. Oh, there it goes. Where? And this is the traditional placenta cake. The religious placenta cake right here. Right here is the Roman cheesecake. And one more is the Savillum cheesecake. I don't know what that is at the bottom. Kind of look like caviar and that's gross. Okay, but that just was a little history for y'all. So let's get down to it. So in my mixing bowl, and it's going to get a little loud and I'm going to have to go to the microwave and microwave some of this chocolate for y'all. We got Chef Corona in the house today. So in my mixer bowl, I have three packages of cream cheese and we need to whip it. We whip it good. So I'm gonna whip it on high. This is room temperature cream cheese. Mm -hmm. Whip that. Next, what you're going to need to do is I have a cup of milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and semi-sweet chocolate. But if you want to add white chocolate to this, you can. I'm going to toss it in just about a half a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Mm. And this is a trick for when you don't want to do the double boiler method. So I'm gonna make sure that all that olive oil is coated on these chocolate chips before I put them in the microwave. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna cook it for like 15 seconds, remove it, stir it, another 15 seconds, remove it, stir it. While I'm doing that, we're gonna just, y'all have a little break, I'm gonna let this cream cheese whip up and we're gonna go melt this chocolate. <laughs> You know you need to scrape down your side. And y'all see what I got today? Yeah.
rubber spatula. Stop it. So Miss Miss Juliet made me feel so bad. <laughs> Right, I'm back. So our chocolate is melted, you see. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of the chocolate chips in there because I want to have that in my cheesecake. So, but you can see it melts up really good. Now we're gonna add this to our cream cheese. Did everybody like cream cheese? Yes. Cheesecake. Yes. I like cheesecake. <laughs> I know my sister for her birthday, we always get her about three or four different kinds of cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory. Mm. And she loves it. Or her other favorite cake is a strawberry cassada. If anybody know what that is. So. Mm -hmm. We're going to mix this up. Down our sides again because we want everything mixed together good. I like your blender. Thank you. Your sister bought it for me. Oh. All right. <laughs> so I'll show y'all what that's looking like on the inside. That's what you're going to be looking for. Now we're going to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a cup of powdered sugar. And my secret ingredient we got to clean up. Deconstructed. My secret ingredient is some chocolate pudding mix. Mm. Add that right in there. Now, if you don't want to use the chocolate pudding mix, you can just use cocoa powder. And this is a, um, you know, the regular small package, which is about 3.9 ounces, it says. So we're going to give that a mix. And I'm going to scrape down these sides again because I don't want that powdered sugar splashing everywhere. And if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you just had a regular 
old school mixer, that's fine. Or if you got to do it by hand, it's a good exercise for your arms because the cream cheese is good to stir up. Now our last ingredient will be a tub of Cool Whip. Because like I said, again, this is a no-bake cheesecake. Auntie, did you try the uh, peach, the deep fried peach cobbler yet? You hurt me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was it good? Yes, ma'am. Y'all heard it. Awesome. I could have, but I didn't go to the store and get some ice cream. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to mix this Cool Whip in here. down our side. Now, if you don't, you want to make your own Cool Whip or whipping cream. You just, you know, you use heavy cream and whip it. But we want to do kind of easy recipes. All right. So your batter should be, your filling should look like that. Everybody mm -hmm. can see. Yes. So what I did was already pre-baked um, our brownie crust because you know we're on real time on here. So I have my um, I hate when I forget my word. Spring form. My spring form. Thank you. <laughs> spring form pan and in the bottom I have my brownie crust. Now that's just a regular this was a, I bought these brownie mix from all these 89 cents I think a box. Just uh, follow the directions, eggs, oil, and water. And I baked it to where it's still a little bit fudgy. Mm -hmm. And then I chilled it. So what you want to do next, eat that. Now we're going to add our filling on top of our brownie crust. If you don't like brownies, all you have to do is crush you up some chocolate cookies, add some butter, and you got a crust, or if you want graham cracker, that's up to you. And what if I don't want chocolate uh, cheesecake? So, I mean, I just do everything, leave off the chocolate chips and the chocolate no bait, whatever that was you used. Yes, right? yes. And then if you wanted to add another flavor to it, you could. Because okay. your base is cream cheese and the cool with powdered sugar, vanilla extract. So if you wanted to change it, you could maybe add vanilla pudding mix instead of chocolate, or if you want strawberry, mm. whatever flavor. Gotcha. All right. Good. Because I know everybody don't love chocolate like me. <laughs> so you want to start spreading it around. I'm not done adding the rest. Of this. I could use a graham cracker crust too, right? Yes, ma'am. Any kind of cookie. We're going to add the rest. And this is a 10 inch spring form pan. I'm going to get all of that out of there. And you want to just spread it on around, smooth it out. Those pans are not just for cream, uh, cheesecake, right? No, I make all kinds of stuff in these pans. So I think I got it about smoothed out evenly. And then you want to cover it with just some cellophane plastic wrap, or if you got foil, that's fine, but you don't want it really touching it. 
And you're going to refrigerate this for four hours. Destiny, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I never, I never could figure out the use of a spring form pan. Kind of help me out with that. Well, when you got the spring form pan, instead of you like with this cheesecake, instead of you having to flip it out, or you could use the uh, parchment paper to do the same thing and just kind of lift it out. Uh -huh. But it's so you could get that even um, look to your pie or whatever you're making. And it's just easier because then it's on the pan and you can slice it once mm. you pop that ring off, smooth out the edges, decorate it, and you're ready to go. Pop the ring off. Okay, gotcha. Yes, because it's a little snap. On, I'll show you one. I'm not going to snap it because our cake is not molded, but this is your little snap okay. right here. Mm -hmm. So you will flip that back. This is going to expand, pull it right off, and you can serve it right off the little pan that's underneath. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Good question. Okay. Unfortunately, I did not have two spring form pans. So I just used a regular 10 inch fan, so I won't be able to just pop it out. But this is one we did earlier. And what I like, what I'm gonna add to mine is some marshmallow cream fluff. I love it. Some raspberries, fresh. I froze them a little bit. And of course we need a chocolate ganache. So we're going to do the same thing. Now you can add cream and butter to this. I'm just going to do the same thing with the olive oil. Because we already got cream and inside our cheesecake. So we'll go microwave this and be back. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get ready to plate for you guys, and then we'll have a little game before we get out of here. And also, these little pie things come in handy, too. If you did, if you just had this taken out of the pan or any pie, you know, you could just go right down, boom, perfect pie piece. Oh, okay. What's that called? Uh, a pie slicer. Oh, okay. So we're going to go check on our chocolate chips real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil. And y'all don't, you have to watch your chocolate in the microwave because it will burn if you mm. don't stir it periodically. So I'm gonna plate this up and be right back. And then we're gonna do our little game. All right, 
I got our raspberries Hello. right here. Hello. Got our marshmallow fluff. Mm. Like I said, the marshmallow fluff is only optional. Oh, you said leave it in the refrigerator? Four hours. Okay. I'm going to put my fluff right down on my plate. Wow. Um, Do you take pictures of your desserts? Yes, ma'am. You would know that if you was on Facebook, Auntie. Uh-uh. Not. Nah, mm -mm. <laughs> my face is beautiful. <laughs> Got a little bit of our chocolate ganache. <laughs> So that's to make it look appetizing. Yes. Mm. Aww. So, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. She kind of laid Aww. down. She ain't been in there four hours yet, but but y'all can see she still looks delicious. Yeah. Um, she's been in there about two hours, so four more hours and straight out there's uh, the other pan with the spring pan. You know, it'll be a little bit more pretty, but she's still gorgeous. Nice for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. That's what I yeah, was thinking. She, yeah. she might not be the daughter. She just might be the stepdaughter. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she the stepdaughter cheesecake, but she's still good and delicious. And this is no baked cheesecake. Mm. I guess total time would be all four hours and 20 minutes. It don't take 20 minutes to make it, but they want you to chill it. For four hours, but I'm showing you this is at two hours and it's still pretty holding up pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so just a little quick game to see how many people know about some chocolate. Bear with me. All right, I'm gonna share. Uh oh, let me check my chat. Oh, Kim, you know I got you, sis. So I bring you a whole half of the cheesecake. All right, so for our game, it's going to be called Guess That Candy Bar. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with number one. Anybody could guess, just say, say your name. Wait a minute. Ooh. I don't see what you're talking about. Everybody can't see the how well do you know your chocolate on the screen? It's no. not big enough. You, it's, it's your desktop that's showing. You probably mm -hmm. need to click on to that first and open it up. Uh -huh. And then go and share. Flint cities to set up shop in rural areas, and many of them moved into houses with other millennials, so they still have some human contact and don't get lonely. Uh, okay. Hey, what do you think of this, Megan? Can everybody see it now? Yes. 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 Okay. Somebody needs to Somebody turn up Somebody needs their... to mute, please. I don't want to mute everybody. So whoever that is, can you mute yourself? Thank you. All right, starting with number one. Anybody know which candy bar that is? I did. Snickers. Snickers. Who said Snickers? I did. Correct. Number two. Milky Way. Butterfinger. No. Butterfinger. Butterfinger. Okay. Correct. So. Number three. Baby Ruth. Hey they. Correct. Baby Ruth. Number four. Milky Way. Milky Way. Milky Correct. Way. 
Number five. Payday. 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 Correct. Number six. What you gonna call it? Kim, <laughs> let the seniors answer. Well, Kim, how much chocolate are you eating over there? <laughs> <A lot of. laughs> me, me and Kim love some chocolate. Number really? Two. I wouldn't know. I only know two, and that's it. Number the only sweet I eat is chocolate. That's the only thing I eat. Yeah, and what really? you is one of my favorites. I didn't even know they still made those. Yes. I can see that airy stuff in it. I'm like, that's that what you would call it. They oh Christ crispy. Yeah. Uh huh. Number seven. Three uh, musketeers. Yes, and I can't stand three musketeers though. Mm. Uh, number eight. Heath bar. Heath bar. No. No. An old candy bar. Mellow. Marsh. Mallow. I give you a hint. Um, some streets are named after it. Peace Tree Street. <laughs> <laughs> He's so silly. Main Street. Fifth oh, Avenue. Fifth Avenue. Fifth, Fifth Avenue. Avenue. I, I, I didn't know what that looked like. Number okay. eight is Fifth Avenue. I don't think I ever even ate one of those. I haven't either. Um, number nine. I'm enjoying Enjoy. one of my other favorites. Yes. Yeah. And number 10. I have never ate that one either. A Milo. Uh, one Milo. million dollar bar. A thousand one hundred million dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it is called a hundred grand bar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Can I ask a question? Because yes. I don't see this candy bar anymore. Does anyone re remember the butternut? I used to love those. Oh, yes. yes. But it's called butternut. What is it called? Butternut? Butternut. butternut. A butterfinger. Uh, what was that? Uh, butternut. 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 Yeah. Butternut. I used to love them. Butternut. And I don't see them anymore. What color was the package? It was yellow and green. Orange. Yellow. Oh. Is you talking butternut. about something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Look, yeah. I have a puzzle that was all um candies. Oh yeah, that's it. It was good. Show it again, Chef. I'm sorry. One more time. Okay. Huh? okay. That, it was in the middle. It's, it's oh, caramel, caramel and caramel, caramel. caramel. Peanut. and <laughs> roasted peanut. That sounds like an up the uh, old Snickers. It was really good. It, it, it was. was good. It really that was, was another one that used Butter to be. Uh, was, hmm. anybody remember the big time? It used to be a candy bar. Is time. that? Yeah. Oh, hell oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't What's that taste like? I don't know. What about uh, a butterfinger? Caramel. What about, what about this one? I what remember seeing those. Yeah. Yeah. What about Charleston Chew? Oh, wow, yeah, I heard that good. in a minute. Yeah, I remember yeah. those. Oh yeah, the Charleston Chew. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Oh, that oh, is okay. it for our class today. Oh, how much cocoa powder instead of chocolate pudding mix? Um, so my pudding box was 3.9 ounces, so about the same. So about half of an eight ounce. So four, just do four ounces, um, Miss uh, Wilma. Yes. I was answering your question about the cocoa powder. Yes. Use four ounces of cocoa powder. Thank you. You're welcome. And that is it for us today. You can stay on so I can go over the announcements. We and I enjoyed you all today. I hope you love the recipes with our stepdaughter, stepsister, chocolate. <laughs> cheesecake with the brownie crust. And I can't even taste it for two more hours. I'm going to just have to not look at it. Put her back in the fridge and let her firm up. Yeah, I'm going to put her back in there and let her firm on up. Um, but everybody enjoyed the class today? Yeah. Yes. yes. And we're yes. back still peaking at 18. I'm glad. Yes. All right. Hey, great. That is awesome. You can keep telling people and making our class go bigger and better and greater. 
Well, y'all have a beautiful, blessed day. You too.